Welcome to our final lecture. This week we'll talk about the final section of the course, non-homogeneous linear systems. And I'm going to show you four methods that we can use to solve homogeneous linear systems. We're going to be looking at linear systems like this. X prime is equal to P T X plus G, where P is a square N by N matrix and G is a vector function. And we want our matrix function and our vector function to be continuous on an, some open interval between alpha and beta. The general solution of equation one can be written like this. A linear combination of x1 up to xn plus an extra function. Here, the linear combination of the x1 up to xn is the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous system, and vt is a particular solution to equation 1. The four methods that we're going to study today are diagonalization, which I talked about last week, the method of undetermined coefficients. We talked about that method back in chapter three. We're going to extend that method to linear systems. Variation of parameters, again, something that we looked at in chapter three, but now we're going to extend. And the fourth method is the method using the Laplace transform. Let's talk about method one. How can we use diagonalization of a matrix to solve a non-homogeneous linear system? For this method, let's suppose that we're looking at x prime is equal to ax plus g, where a is a square constant matrix. g is some vector valued function defined on an open interval. xi1 up to xi n are the eigenvectors of a, and t is the transition matrix. That's the matrix where the first column is the first eigenvector, second column is the second eigenvector, and so on. We know from our linear algebra course that then, as long as we have n linearly independent eigenvectors, T inverse AT is a diagonal matrix. And it's the diagonal matrix where the entries on the main diagonal, R1, R2 up to Rn, are the eigenvalues of A. So what's the key step? This is the key step. The whole of this method is based around doing a substitution. We're going to be doing the substitution y is equal to t inverse x. Everything in this section, everything in this method is based on y is equal to t inverse x. Or equivalently, x is equal to ty. We take the differential equation that we're trying to solve, and if we replace every x by ty, then on the left we have ty prime, and on the right we have ATY plus g. Multiply on the left by t inverse. That's the same as saying y prime is equal to t inverse ATY plus t inverse g. <coughs> And we know what T inverse AT is. That's just the diagonal matrix, which I've been calling G. T inverse G is just some function. We'll call that H. So now we have an easier linear system. Y prime is equal to DY plus H is an easier linear system. We've changed our difficult one into an easy one. Why is it easy? Because y prime equal to dy <coughs> plus h is just this linear system. In the first differential equation, we've only got y1 and t. The only variables in the second equation are y2 and t. And that's true all of the way down. The only variables in the final equation are y, n, and t. That means each one of these equations we could solve individually. These are just first order linear equations. And we know how to solve those. We did that in chapter two. The key 
key idea here is if we know y, then we know that x is equal to t multiplied by y. Okay, let's do an example using this method. Solve x prime is equal to minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, x plus 2 e to the power of minus t, 3 t. <coughs> First, we need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. You know how to do this. So I'll just tell you that the eigenvalues are minus 3 and minus 1, and the eigenvectors are 1 minus 1 and 1 1. So we can write down the transition matrix T. First column is first eigenvector, 1 minus 1, and the second column is the second eigenvector, 1 1. And we know how to do the inverse of a matrix. T inverse must be a half, 1 minus 1, 1, 1. Now let's do the key step. This whole method is based around doing the substitution, y is equal to t inverse x. Always we do y is equal to t inverse x. And we do that to change our difficult differential equation into an easy differential equation. We get ty prime is equal to ty plus 2e to the power minus t, 3t. Multiply on the left by t inverse, that's the same as y prime is equal to t inverse ty plus t inverse 2e to the power minus t, 3t. But that's just dy plus, then we have t inverse, a half, 1 minus 1, 1, 1 multiplied by our function 2e to the power minus t, 3t. d is just a diagonal matrix where the entries on the main diagonal are the eigenvalues. So minus 3, 0, 0, minus 1. And we can multiply this matrix by this vector to get 2e to the power minus t minus 3t, 2e to the minus t plus 3t. And that is just the linear system y1 prime plus, I'm moving the y1 to the left, so minus 3 becomes plus 3. y1 is equal to e to the power of minus t plus minus 3 over 2t. And another first order linear equation, y2 prime plus y2 is equal to e to the power of minus t plus 3 over 2t. This is too easy first order linear equations. We know how to solve these. I'm going to skip the calculation. I'll leave this for you to check. Practice um, solving first order linear equations before the final exam. You can use this as an example. Solve these equations and just check that these are the solutions. If we know y, then we know x, because x is just ty. That's the matrix 1, 1, minus 1, 1, multiplied by y1, y2. We know y1 and we know y2, so all we need to do is multiply a matrix by a vector, and then we finish the calculus, we finish the answer. So let me just recap. We did the substitution y is equal to t inverse x, and we changed our difficult linear system into an easy linear system. We solved the linear, easy linear system, and then we multiplied on the left by t to find x. Let's do another one. Solve x prime is equal to 1, root 3, root 3, minus 1, x, plus e to the power t, root 3, e to the power minus t. We need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Here they are. After we have the eigenvectors, we can write down the transition matrix T. And then we can take the inverse. T inverse is a quarter minus root 3 over 4, root 3 over 4, a quarter. And of course, the diagonal matrix D is just a diagonal matrix where the entries on the main diagonal are the eigenvalues. So just minus 2 and 2 on the main diagonal. 
Okay, now we're ready to go. Now we're gonna do the key step. The main idea here is we, we're gonna do the substitution. <coughs> y is equal to T inverse X. And we can skip some steps here because it's always the same. We always end up with y prime is equal to dy plus t inverse g. Put in our d, put in our t inverse, put in our g, and this is what we find. This is an easy linear system because the first equation own, only includes y1 and t. The second equation only includes y2 and t. We have two easy first order linear equations. You know how to solve these. Make sure you practice them before the final exam. Check for me that I haven't made a mistake. Check that these are the solutions. <coughs> so now we know why. There's one more step to get x. We're just going to multiply on the left by t. As soon as we know y, we know that x is equal to t multiplied by y. That's the, that's the product of these, this matrix with this vector. And I'm not going to finish this calculation. You know how to multiply matrices and vectors together. Let's move on to method two, the method of undetermined coefficients. Again, we're going to be looking at x prime is equal to ax plus g, where a is a square constant matrix. <coughs> now, do you remember what we did in chapter three? The idea is we find the general solution to the homogeneous equation. We look at the function g, and we're going to make a guess, which includes some constants. We're going to test our guess and try to find the constants. And then step three, we're going to do one plus two. We're going to take the general solution to the homogeneous equation, and then we're going to do plus our particular solution. So for example, solve x prime is equal to minus two, one, one, minus two, x, plus two e to the power minus t, three t. We've already done this. This was the first example we did today. So we, we already know the answer, but now we're going to solve it using our second method. <coughs> first, we need the general solution of the homogeneous equation. <coughs> it's always constant eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue t plus constant eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue t. That's straightforward. We know how to do that. Step two, we need to find a particular solution. So look what we have here. We have vector multiplied by an exponential function plus vector multiplied by t. Or <coughs> vector multiplied by a first degree polynomial. Now, let's go back to the previous slide. Look, e to the power minus t solves the homogeneous equation. That means we can't just use e to the power minus t in our ansatz. We need to multiply by t. And systems are slightly more complicated than just second order equations. As well as t e to the power minus t, we also gonna need an e to the power minus t terms. That's going to take care of this. It's going to be some vector a, t e to the power t, plus some vector b, e to the power t. Next, let's look at the second term. We have vector t. <coughs> That's a first degree polynomial, so we think in our ansatz, we should also have a first degree polynomial. So in our ansatz, we put vector t plus vector. 
Okay, we need to test this ansatz and try to find the vectors A, B, C, and D. I said this earlier, but <coughs> let me repeat, because minus one is an eigenvalue of our matrix. We can't just have e to the power of minus t in our ansatz. We also we need to have both t e to the power of minus t and e to the power of minus t. Okay, so now we've tested this ansatz by putting this into the differential equation. And I've tried to use colors to show what we have. X prime, differentiate x, <coughs> product rule on the first term, differentiate the t to get a e to the power minus t, and then differentiate the e to the power minus t to get minus a t e to the power minus t. The derivative of b e to the power minus t is minus b e to the power minus t. The derivative of c t is just c, and the derivative of d is zero. <coughs> That's equal to a x, so just take x and multiply on the left by capital A, and then plus G, which I've written in red. We need to find A, B, C, and D. Let's look first at the terms involving T e to the power minus T. On the left, there's minus A, t e to the power minus t, and on the right is capital A, a t e to the power minus t. So these must be the same. Minus a must be equal to capital A. a. <coughs> that tells us that a must be an eigenvector of capital A. So a must be a vector of the form alpha alpha, for some alpha. We don't know alpha yet but we know it must be of the form alpha alpha. Now let's look at the terms involving e to the power minus t. I've highlighted these in orange. On the left, there's an a minus b. On the right, capital AB plus 2, 0. <coughs> if I rearrange that, I have a plus ib on the right, that's ab here, and the minus b, take that over, becomes plus b. And on the left, we could have a minus 2, 0. a, remember, was alpha, alpha. So on the left, it's alpha minus 2, alpha. And then over here on the right, a plus i is minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. Multiply that by b, we get minus b1 plus b2, b1 minus b2. Now look what we have here. <coughs> there's a minus b1 plus b2 in the first position, and in the second position is b1 minus b2. The second position is just minus 1 multiplied by the first position here. So over on the left, the first position, the alpha minus 2, must be equal to minus 1 multiplied by the second position, or minus alpha. Because minus b1 plus b2 is the same as minus, open bracket, b1 minus b2, we must have that alpha minus 2 is equal to minus alpha, and that then implies alpha is equal to 1. So we know A. A must be 1, 1. <coughs> now we finished talking about all of the terms, including A and B. We know that B1 minus B2 must be equal to 1 because it's equal to alpha. So B must be K, K minus 1. There's no more terms involving A or B to talk about. So that means K could be any number. Let's choose an easy K. Let's just choose K is equal to zero. 
then we would get b is equal to zero minus one. Now you will know for a we had to choose a is equal to one one, but for b there's infinitely many choices that we could choose. Let's go back to the equation. We've looked at the t e to the power minus t terms and we've looked at the e to the power minus t terms. Next, let's look at the terms involving a t. On the left, zero. On the right, ac plus zero three. That's easy to solve. c must be a inverse of zero minus three and I'll leave it for you to check that a inverse of zero minus three is equal to one two. And then finally, let's look at the terms which include the function 1. On the left, we have C. On the right, we have AD. We know C, so now we can find D, because D is just A inverse C. And again, I'll leave this for you to check. Check that we get minus 4 over 3, minus 5 over 3. Okay, and that's what we needed to do. Now we have our particular solution. Now we found the vectors A, B, C, and D. So we can write down the general solution to the differential equation by writing general solution to the homogeneous equation plus the particular solution. And if you flick back in the lecture notes or if you've got these slides open and you flick back to the previous time we solved this example, you will see that we have we get exactly the same answer that we got before. <coughs> Let's do another one. Solve x prime is equal to 2, 3, 4, 1, x plus e to the power t minus 10t minus 3. We're going to use the same method first. We'll find the general solution of the homogeneous equation. Step two, we'll find a particular solution, and then step three, we're going to add them together. We're going to be considering three simpler differential equations. We're going to be looking at the homogeneous equation, which I'm writing in blue. We're going to be looking at this orange equation, x prime is equal to 2, 3, 4, 1, x plus e to the power t, zero. We will find a particular solution to the orange equation. And we're going to look at x prime is equal to 2, 3, 4, 1, x plus 0, minus 10t, minus 3. Again, we're going to find a particular solution this time. And then after we've got our three solutions, our three functions, we're just going to add them together. First, let's look at the blue one. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors I've written here. As soon as we know the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, we can write down the general solution. Constant eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue t plus constant eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue t. So that was straightforward as long as you can get the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Let's move on to the next equation. We need to find a particular solution to this equation. So we need to make a guess. We need an ansatz. What type of function do we have here? We have an exponential function. It's a vector, in this case 1, 0, multiplied by e to the power t. Because 1 is not an eigenvalue of the matrix, the ansatz we're going to try is just going to be some vector a, e to the power t. That's easier than the last time. We just need to find the vector a. OK, so we do our calculation. We start with our differential equation, x prime is equal to 2, 3, 4, 1, x plus e to the power t is 0. On the left, we have the derivative of x, but the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t, so that's straightforward. And on the right, we have 2, 3, 4, 1, x plus e to the power t, 0. Cancel the e to the power t's. 
we must have that a1, a2 is equal to 2a1 plus 3a2 plus 1, 4a1 plus a2. This is easier than the last one. To satisfy this, we need a1 is 0 and a2 is minus a third. So therefore, a particular solution to this orange differential equation must be 0 minus a third e to the power t. We've got one more equation we need to look at. x prime is equal to 2, 3, 4, 1, x plus 0 minus 10, t minus 3. Look at the function g. What type of function do we have here? We have a first degree polynomial. So our ansatz is going to be a first degree polynomial. We're going to look at x is equal to a t plus b for some vectors a and b. Let's put this into the differential equation and see what we get. On the left, x prime is just a1, a2. And on the right, I'll leave it for you to check, we get this. <coughs> If we look at the terms involving t, here's one and here's one, we get 0 is 2a1 plus 3a2. If we look at the terms involving 1 at the top, we get a1 on the left, 2b1, 3b2. So a1 must be 2b1 plus 3b2. And then do the same thing for the second position to get the last two equations. That's a linear system with four equations in four unknowns. You know how to solve this, so I'll just tell you that the answer is A is 3 minus 2 and B is 0, 1. So therefore, our function is 3t, 1 minus 2t. What do we do to finish? We add all of these together. The blue solution plus the orange solution plus the green solution gives us the general solution to the differential equation. Let's move on to method three. Method of variation of parameters. Again, think back to chapter three, we've already talked about variation of parameters for second order equations. This time we're going to be considering x prime is equal to ptx plus gt. So this time instead of a constant matrix we have a matrix function. We need p and g to be continuous on an open interval and we need there to exist a fundamental matrix capital psi for the homogeneous system x prime is equal to ptx. If xi is a fundamental matrix for the homogeneous equation, then we know that the general solution to the homogeneous equation can be written as x is equal to xi c, where c is a constant vector. The idea of the method of variation of parameters, or the, the guess that we're going to be making here is, can we replace the constant vector c by some unknown function u of t. And can we choose u of t so that our new function is a solution of the non-homogeneous equation? So same kind of idea that we were doing back in chapter three. So then the question becomes, can we find u of t? Okay, so we're going to guess that x is equal to xi u, and I'm going to put this into the non-homogeneous differential equation. x prime is then psi prime u plus psi u prime, and then on the right side, px plus g is just p psi u plus g. But 
wait a minute, remember that from last week, if xi is a fundamental matrix for x prime is equal to ptx, then that means xi solves the same differential equation. I said that you had to prove this, it's one of the exercises in the lecture notes. You should be able to prove that if xi is a fundamental matrix for this homogeneous equation, then xi solves the same differential equation. So look, we have xi prime u and we have p xi u. These must be the same. We can cancel these out. So what are we left with? We're left with xi u prime is equal to g. Xi must be invertible because it's a fundamental matrix. The columns are a, fu a, a fundamental set of solutions. That means the columns are linearly independent. So that means xi is invertible. So therefore, u prime is equal to xi inverse g. And integrate that, u is the integral of xi inverse g. If we can find u, then we can find x because x is just xi multiplied by u. So let's just recap. If we want to use the method of variation of premises to solve the non-homogeneous linear system x prime is equal to px plus g, the method is Step one, find a fundamental matrix for the homogeneous system. And then step two, we're going to be using the formula x is equal to xi, integral of xi inverse multiplied by g. Let's do a couple of examples. First, the same example that we've solved twice already. Solve x prime is equal to minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, x plus 2 e to the power minus d, 3, 2. The general solution of the homogeneous equation we know because we've done it twice already today. Constant eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue t plus constant eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue t. So we can write down the fundamental matrix. 1 minus 1 e to the power minus t gives us the first column. And the 1, 1 e to the power minus t gives us the second column. That's step one done. Step two is going to be to use the formula. We need the inverse of psi. We know how to do that for a 2 by 2 matrix. 1 divided by the determinant of the matrix, swap the entries on the main diagonal, and then put a minus sign on the other ones. We need to integrate xi inverse g so that's the integral of e to the power 2t minus 3 over 2t e to the power 3t and 1 plus 3 over 2t e to the power t. Don't be scared of integrating a vector function. All we do is we just integrate each position separately. Integral of e to the power 2t, of course, is just a half e to the power 2t. For minus 3 over 2t e to the power 3t, we need to do integration by parts. And we get minus a half t e to the power 3t plus 1 over 6 e to the power 3t. And then, of course, we do plus constant on the end. And then repeat that for 1 plus 3 over 2t e to the power t to get t plus 3 over 2t e to the power t minus 3 over 2 e to the power t plus a constant. We're just integrating here. And then we're almost finished. The formula is x is equal to psi integral of psi inverse g. So that's just matrix multiplied by a vector. 
And I leave it for you to check that we get this. And this is exactly the same solution that we've already found two times today. Let's do another one. Step one, we'll find the, a fundamental matrix for the homogeneous equation. And then step two, we're going to use the formula. We need the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the matrix. And as soon as we now have those, we can write down a fundamental matrix for the homogeneous linear system. We need the inverse of xi, so that's what we do next. We need xi inverse g. I'll leave this for you to check the details. Assuming I haven't made a mistake here, and let me know if you find a mistake, xi inverse g is t to the power of minus 1, 8 over 5, 4 over 5, e to the power of 5t. Then we need to integrate the function. That's going to be straightforward. Integral of t to the power of minus 1 is ln t. Integral of 8 over 5 is 8 over 5t. Integral of 4 over 5 e to the power of 5t is 4 over 25 e to the power of 5t. And then we do plus our components, plus c1 on the top and plus c2 on the bottom. And then one final step, we need to calculate xi multiplied by this integral that we've just found. So that's matrix multiplied by a vector function. And again, I leave this for you to check. Assuming I haven't made any mistakes, this is the solution on the bottom. So it's just find a fundamental matrix and then use this formula. Calculate the inverse of xi, calculate xi inverse multiplied by g, integrate it, and then multiply on the left by xi. As long as you have this formula, you can use this method to solve your non-homogeneous linear systems. I have one more method that I want to talk about. I want to talk about using the Laplace transform to solve some non-homogeneous linear systems. Now, first some notation. If small x is the vector, x1 up to xn, then when I take the Laplace transform of small x, I'm going to call that capital X. And all this means is we take the Laplace transform of each coordinate. So Laplace transfer of x1 in the first coordinate, and then Laplace transfer of x2 in the second coordinate, and so on. Recall that recall from chapter four that the Laplace transfer of y prime satisfied this formula. Laplace transfer of y prime was equal to s capital y minus y zero. We have the same formula for the Laplace transfer of a vector function. The Laplace transform of x prime is s capital X minus x at zero. So for example, let's do this one again. Solve x prime is equal to minus 2, 1, 1 minus 2, x plus 2, e to the power of minus t, 3t. This is slightly different. If we're going to use the Laplace transform, we need an initial condition. So this time, an initial value problem with the initial condition x at time 0 is equal to the 0 vector. How 
how do we solve differential equations using the Laplace transform? We take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. So on the left, the Laplace transform of small x prime is S capital X minus X at zero. On the right, A is just a constant matrix. The Laplace transform of a constant, we just ignore that. The Laplace transform of small x is capital X plus capital G. The capital G is the Laplace transform of small g. And because the initial condition is zero, we can forget about the minus x zero. So what do we have? We have SI minus capital A capital X is equal to capital G. So that means capital X is SI minus A inverse capital G. SI minus A was S plus 2 minus 1 minus 1 S plus 2 because A is minus 2, 1, 1, minus 2. We take the inverse of this function. We know how to do the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. This is what we get. So capital X is this inverse matrix multiplied by our capital. To finish, we just take the inverse Laplace transform of this. And I leave this for you to check. If we take the inverse Laplace transform of this function, we get the solution at the bottom. Let's do one more example in the final five slides. Solve 2x prime plus y prime minus y minus t is equal to zero. x prime plus y prime minus t squared is equal to zero. With the initial conditions, x of zero is one, x, y of zero is equal to zero. Now, this is not in the standard form because previously we always had x prime is equal to something, y prime is equal to something. But these two equations have both x prime and y prime. So we need to rearrange these first. And I leave it for you to check that these two differential equations can be written like this. x prime is equal to y minus t squared plus t. y prime is equal to minus y plus 2t squared minus t. Please check that for me. Please check there's no mistakes here. If we write this in terms of matrices, that's the same as saying x prime is equal to 0, 1, 0, minus 1, x plus t minus t squared, 2t squared minus t, with the initial condition x of 0 is 1, 0. We want to take the Laplace transform of this. And I've skipped some steps here. We get SI minus A capital X is equal to X zero plus G of S. So that's S minus one zero S plus one capital X is equal to one zero plus the Laplace transform of T is one over S squared. The Laplace transform of T squared is two over S cubed. So a capital G is this matrix function. 1 over s squared minus 2 over s cubed, 4 over s cubed minus 1 over s squared. So, put these together. 1, 0 plus this vector, we end up with 1 over s cubed multiplied by the vector s cubed plus s minus 2, 4 minus s. I leave that for you to check. Okay. 
we need the inverse of the matrix on the left. We know how to do the inverse of a two by two matrix. We get this. And then after we multiply the two matrices together, we get the line at the bottom. To finish, we need to find the inverse Laplace transform of capital X. We need to use partial fractions. And I leave this for you to check. Please check that these two lines are true. We need the inverse Laplace transforms of these two functions. And that's straightforward now that we have the partial fractions formula. And then after we know those, we know small x. I know I've been quick in this final example. That's because there's not much new here. It's just lots of details to be checked later. And then we come to the end of this course. Are there any questions? Thank <laughs> you.